I would be talking to you about another very important topic which is extremely close to my heart and that is fungal keratitis and the innovations and the research uh, that we have undertaken in this field. But coming to the basics uh, first, of course there are no financial uh, interests in any of the products mentioned in the presentation. For us in India, the fungal keratitis has become extremely important because that is responsible for almost half of our cases here. And it is extremely important to know where in geographically you are located in India or for that matter anywhere because, uh, because that determines what uh, antifungal agents are you, go you are going to start. For instance, for us in North and West India, it is aspergillus which is the commonest, but for South and East India, it is fusarium which is the commonest and these organisms are susceptible to different antifungal agents. Of course, the symptoms uh, we are all aware of, uh, the indolent symptoms of foreign body sensation, redness, pain and diminution of vision, and the classical uh, features of uh, uh, dry, thick, raised uh, texture of the ulcer with feathery margins, satellite lesions, endothelial plaques, and a fixed hypopion. Uh, sometimes there can be specific uh, signs such as uh, dermatitis keratitis. Uh, this looks like an iris prolapse, but it is not. It is infection because of a, a, a brown pigmentation which is there because of dermatitis fungi, that is curvil area. And when you treat it, the pigmentation actually disappears. Uh, then you can also have uh, fusarium with the severe cause, deep extension and perforation, and east with a collar button configuration. The most important stain in a case of corneal scraping, whether it is bacterial, fungal, or acanthamoeba, is only one, and that is KOH. The, uh, if you have a choice to do one single stain, you should always do KOH, because that immediately tells you whether you're going to start your antifungal therapy or not. Apart from this, routinely, we do, do, we do gram stain, and subroth dextrose agar is used for cultures, the positivity rate of which is 52 to 68%. Uh, Confocal microscopy is a great innovation and helps us very well because you can actually pick up the hyphae. So if you clinically suspect a case of fungal keratitis, which is KOH negative, culture negative, but confoscan positive, you can still start your antifungal therapy. The sensitivity being 94% and the specificity being 78%. And this is the innovation that we have done in all those uh, uh, PHCs and district hospitals which do not have a laboratory microscope. You can just, even if you have a pocket magnifier, you can still pick up hyphae after staining it with KOH. And this is the pocket magnifier and this is the slide uh, on which the smear has been made and which has been uh, placed here. And uh, once you do this, you place your smartphone uh, on the eyepiece here and you click a picture. And when you click the picture, uh, and after clicking the picture, you just zoom it like that. And when you zoom it, you can actually see the hyphae present. So this is an innovation which was done by my colleague, Dr. Tushara Garwal. And uh, it is very useful for areas which do not have a, a laboratory microscope, but would still have a KOH uh, wet mount uh, facility. The mainstay for a case of fungal keratitis is 5% atomycin, and uh, you have to taper it uh, after four to seven days interval if there is a response. However, if there's worsening, you can add amphotericin B or 2% voriconazole. And unlike a case of bacterial keratitis, which we say is, work, is responding or not in 48 hours, a case of fungal keratitis, you say in seven days whether it is working or not. And unlike a case of bacterial keratitis, which responds in about 10 to 14 days' time, for fungal keratitis, to say that uh, the, the, the treatment would take as long as three to four weeks. So fungus is always uh, late in responding, and so that much time period has to be given for that. Uh, this is just to show a case of uh, aspergillus keratitis, which respond to topical natamycin. And the, currently, the topical antifungal therapy uh, has limitations because of poor ocular penetration and poor bioavailability, availability, which is a problem with natamycin as well, and also toxicity. Uh, voriconazole uh, did come into being, but uh, the MIC values for voriconazole, as far as fusarium is concerned, is high. And uh, so all cases of fusarium may not respond to voriconazole, although for candida and aspergillus, they are lower. And the various uh, studies in the trials, including the randomized control trials, whenever top netamycin was compared to econazole, itroconazole, or voriconazole, it was always found that netamycin was superior. And this included the mycotic ulcer treatment trial, which was done at the Arvind Eye Hospital, uh, 
where voriconazole or natamycin were compared as primary uh, modes of uh, therapy. However, fusarium cases were much more in their series, 40% as opposed to aspergillus, which is 17%, and we know that fusarium does not respond to voriconazole that well. Now, if we were to do this study in North India, in, in RP center on, or in PJI for that matter, this may be reversed because <clears throat> for us, aspergillus is more common as compared to fusarium, and these uh, results may not be, may not hold uh, true there. In cases uh, uh, of large ulcers, more than two-third involvement, more than six millimeters in diameter, you do start a systemic antifungal agents. And uh, this could be uh, in the form of ketoconazole or voriconazole, which is started 200 milligrams BD. And for this, liver function tests have to be done every two weeks. Now, this is a case just to show an example of which responded to tropical natamycin and systemic ketoconazole of fusarium uh, keratitis. And this is the case which we published of tunnel uh, keratitis, which responded to tropical voriconazole and systemic voriconazole. Uh, there is no randomized control trial in literature to say which drug is better, uh, ketoconazole systemic or voriconazole systemic. So we did this randomized control trial, and uh, this has got accepted as a paper, at the, this forthcoming American Academy of Ophthalmology where all cases of severe fungal keratitis, we started either tropical natamycin with systemic voriconazole or topical natamycin with systemic ketoconazole. And in terms of healing, we found that both the drugs did well. But in terms of visual acuity, the ones which were on voriconazole did better as compared to systemic ketoconazole. And in terms of ratio tear film serum concentration, also we found that uh, systemic voriconazole was far uh, better as compared to systemic ketoconazole. So we are inclined to believe that if you have to start systemic antifungal agents in a case of fungal keratitis, systemic voriconazole is better than systemic ketoconazole. Now coming to the targeted drug delivery, which we uh, started uh, in the form of intracameral and intracorneal injections. Intracameral injections are given in cases of non-responsive uh, cases of hypopion, uh, which is due to fungus with endothelial exudates, or deep anterior chamber exudates. And although we were giving amphotericin B 7.5 to 10 microgram per 0.1 ml in 5% dextrose, but we think it tends to cause a little more reaction. And Sushmita is sitting here, who was the one who's, who did this trial and uh, published this in uh, Konya. Uh, we use voriconazole now 50 to 100 micrograms per 0.1 ml. And uh, uh, if you see the various reports and literature for the intracameral injections, the healing rate is almost 90%. But like I always say, probably the cases which didn't do well never got reported. Only the cases which did well get reported. So we really wouldn't know this unless one does a randomized control trial. We did do a comparative study where we did not find any uh, difference uh, in the cases where we gave intracameral amphotericin B or we didn't but then the numbers in these uh, series was uh, very less. So probably we need, we need to do the study with the larger numbers. And this is a case uh, which responded to intracameral amphotericin B. Coming to the intrastromal or the intracorneal injections, these are indicated for deep mycotic keratitis, non-perforated ulcers, not responsive to conventional tropical and systemic antifungal therapy for four weeks. And again, the response rate is 85%. And this is the first report that we published in American Journal of Ophthalmology, and this was the first case that we did. And we were so encouraged by the results that we made this, we included this into our, uh, uh, we did this for some more eyes uh, with good results, and then included it into our standard of uh, care. And again, then we did this randomized control trial, which was published in Ophthalmology, where we compared tropical versus intrastromal variconazole as an adjunct to natamycin in recalcitrant fungal keratitis. So intrastromal injections were given three injections, 72 hours uh, apart. Uh, uh, and in, in one group, topical voriconazole was started, and the other group, intrastromal voriconazole, was given. And this was for moderate to severe ulcers. And in terms of time to healing, we did not find any difference between the two. And this is two set of cases which responded to topical natamycin and topical voriconazole and two set of cases which responded to tropical natamycin and intrastromal voriconazole. And we wanted to see whether there's any increased vascularization with these intrastromal uh, injections, but we didn't find any difference 
in terms of quadrants of vascularization or the depth of vascularization. And this is the way it is given, that is uh, AC paracentesis is done first, followed by the washing of the exudates, uh, followed uh, subsequently by the voriconazole injection, which is uh, then given 50 micrograms per 0.1 ml intracamerally. And these are the intrastromal injections, uh, which you just give like you would do a macular grit, so you make a form of a barrage uh, around the lesion in five to six hemimeridians, encompassing the lesion completely. And the reflex is very much like that of a phaco wound hydration. And you can repeat it after 72 hours if required. So this is the algorithm that we follow. So if it is less than two-thirds stroma, less than six millimeters in size, start with topical natamycin. If there is no response, add topical voriconazole. However, if it is a large ulcer with a greater depth involvement, start topical natamycin and systemic uh, voriconazole or ketoconazole. If there is no response, add topical voriconazole. And if after four weeks there is no response, you can either do an intracameral injection or intrastromal or combined, depending upon where the focus of infection is. A word about collagen cross-linking in uh, fungal keratitis, it doesn't work. This is what we published uh, when we did a comparative study between the two groups where we did do collagen cross-linking and another one where we didn't do it. And the same results uh, were also uh, uh, this thing by Arvindaya Hospital, who stopped the trial in between because uh, of marked difference in the rate of perforation in between the two groups. Now, this is something that we are working at. It is a nata matrix. It is, uh, it is actually a, mat uh, a matrix uh, sponge-like material which has been impregnated with natamycin, which we've done the animal studies, which has been intrastromally uh, uh, injected or sutured and uh, we found that uh, this cross-linked self-degradable patch that we had produced caused uh, uh, greater uh, cause elevation of the, uh, 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 the, the release of the natamycin was uh, much more prolonged as compared to when you just give drops. And this has just been concluded in the animal studies and we have uh, yet to begin the clinical studies. This is the second innovation that we are looking at, and that is the natamycin 5% is a suspension. But we've solubilized this into 1% solution, and we call it netasol. So the suspension looks like this, and netasol looks something like this. But we've not uh, jeopardized or uh, we've not compromised on the permeability of natamycin. And uh, this can be highlighted here. When we did animal studies, the netasol peak values uh, came before the natamycin peak values because we've linked it to a polymer like that and uh, it remained for the same period of time or longer and at a higher concentration uh, when we compared it with the natamycin suspension. So these are the two things that we are looking at, natamatrix and netasol. And even in multi-dose kinetics, netasol did better than natamycin. Uh, I wouldn't be covering the surgical aspect of it, but those who want to read it, uh, we've done an article on um, in Current Opinions of Ophthalmology, which is a review article, and everything related to that is given there. And this is how the healing of a corneal ulcer should be, uh, with a, a decrease in the size of the epithelial defect, as well as the infiltrate and a formation of a scar, unlike this, which wherein we had to do a therapeutic uh, keratoplasty. And... Uh, this is the book that we've done on corneal ulcers, uh, diagnosis and management uh, for all the details of the ulcers that you want to read. And thank you for your attention.